Hello and well met. This is founder Layroon with Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today I'm going to continue to work on my horror theme campaign. Yesterday I was trying to build a character. I had my computer um, have some issues. I had an internet crash. Something went, went wrong, but uh, I was only able to get about 15 minutes of that in. But if you were watching yesterday, I did finish character. So if I go to the character selection, I was creating... Um, Ilaria, and I was also getting ready to build um, Brayla McGarson, which is a cleric, third level. Um, so yeah, I, I will probably revisit that later when I build the other characters. I think today I'm going to focus a little bit more on the map tools, just for a little variety, because I'm getting kind of bored of building characters. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a map from a collection that was created by the Map Hatter. We also know him as Chris McDermott of Game Tile Warehouse 2020. If you guys haven't seen his website, check it out. It's Game Tile Warehouse 2020. Just search for that on Google. Um, his maps are phenomenal. He has a bunch of them. Um, if you're not willing to put in the time to create maps, he's definitely one of the map cartographers I would uh, recommend for Fantasy Grounds or any of the other platforms. But uh, So without further ado... I'm going to go into the images folder, and if you have any assets loaded like I do, you'll notice you have all these groups up here. When you use Fantasy Grounds, it's a good idea to get familiar with that and to filter these out as you need to. So what I'm going to do is filter this to the Meanders kit that I'm going to check out. And this is the Fantasy Grounds Meanders Map Pack Horror Haunts. And in here are a bunch of Haunted House and Haunted Wizard Tower maps. If you get this uh, collection, he has it available on his website. And it's also in the Fantasy Ground store. So if you look up Horror Haunts or Meanders, you'll be able to check it out. But what it is, is the map selection panel gives you an overview of what maps are included in the pack. Which I really appreciate and enjoy because... It's really not fun to go through every single image and have to bring it up just to see what it is. So this is really handy for a game master or somebody that you know, really needs a map really quick. This really helps with that. So if you pick one of these maps here for your campaign or if you want to use it really quick, you can just click on the little link and it actually brings up the actual map. So that, that's really handy. Um, I, so that's why I recommend these because of the way he put these together. And a lot of products do that, but not all. So these are all organized in a group. Um, the other thing, he has lots of other maps, but this is just the horror theme that I, I wanted to use. So these are available on the, on the store if you're interested. So what you can do with these is you can get these blank ones, which have no furniture at all or no assets, and then he has these other ones that are have things in it. So you can have an empty place, or you can have a full one. And then he has this wizard tower as well, which which you can decor with all of your own, own assets if you want. So this is basically a little bit of a tour tip on the map tools. I'm not doing a full thorough um, educational you know, this is how you're supposed to do a thing. And this is more a little bit more on the creative side. I will show you some tips, and I will try my best to to explain what I'm doing. But if I'm missing something, or if you wanted to look at brushes or something, I'm not going to be doing that in this this video. So I will bring in a couple assets if needed. So without further ado, let's check this out. So I'm going to bring this up, and on this map selection i want to pick the ground floor which is the haunt 01 which is the name of the map so i'm going to pull that up you click on that it brings up the actual map so this map isn't locked or anything it's not uh wizard of the coast product or something that's not supposed to be altered so i can unlock it and that gives you access to the map tools one of the things that most people struggle with is one they don't remember to put on the grid so that's the first thing you do and i've already done that so if you click on the grid icon over to the far right this is where you could set the grid size i have this set to 100 because of the quality and the dots per inch or the dpi or the uh I guess you'd call it pixels per inch. Um, that's how many you roughly have in this particular map. You can probably run this at 70, you know, uh, depending on how you want to scale it. But I have it set pretty, uh, pretty evenly at the scale of 100 by 100. But if you look at the corners here, 
these don't line up with the map properly, but they look good on the actual, on the map itself. But if you want to play around with that, you can if you don't know the scale. Normally, Chris has these set at 50. So if you, uh, for Fantasy Ground, so if you go to 50 by 50, it will scale accordingly. And then when you look at this now, it, it's actually more lined up with, with the uh, corners. But uh, again, it's still off a little bit, so you, you want to shift that over. So if you go to that layer and you unlock it, you can nudge this over to get it to line up with the grid. So right now the grid's kind of this white, kind of off, off color. And then you could adjust that if you need to and then come over to the other side and check that out. And what you'll notice is if the map is not scaled accordingly, it'll be off. So this is the true scale of it. This is, you know, basically how it's supposed to be lined up. So once you have the grid where you want it, you want to go ahead and lock it. And that's the most important aspect of this because when you actually go to um, create content and you want this to, to look right, you're going to want to have this set up properly. So that's one thing. And, and the reason I went to 100 because... I look at the scale of this door. I don't know too many double doors that are, you know, 20 feet wide or whatever. So I thought that was a little bit odd. So I went ahead and rescaled it to 100. And I thought that that was a better, you know, a better use of it. And it's off by by half the amount of square. So it's not too bad. It's It's still even. I think that's a little bit more realistic in size. And it's basically just a preference thing. So it depends on how you want to run your game. But I thought that this uh, 100 scale looked a little bit more realistic because in that way, this door is only about 10 feet wide instead of 20. So that's, that's why I did that. But it's up to you how you want to do it. The other thing you can do with the grid is to adjust the color of it and the opacity. So if you don't like this grayish color, and you think it's obnoxious or you want to see it a little bit better, um, you can come to the tint area and go to the color picker. So I'm going to pick like a yellowish color or maybe some of this reddish color. So you can pick any color you want and you can click on this color wheel. You can put in your RGB value or your um, hex code value to get the color you want. Or if you want to theme it, you can actually grab the eyedropper and hover it over a portion of the map, let's say this burgundy looking carpet or maybe some orange or whatever these colors are on the map. And it will basically take on the, the aspect or the color of whatever you chose. So if I choose that, that brown color of the carpet, it's a little too dark. So you want something that's going to contrast. So I'm just going to pick like a bright yellow. And you can see that's very obnoxious. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit by sliding this a here which is the alpha which is the transparency or how clear it is so if i turn that down a little bit it's not as not as obnoxious and i can see what i need to see so that's that's pretty good so i'm going to hit okay and that definitely um takes on the color of of the yellow that you want so you can be able to see the contrast and it kind of matches so it has like this color of this carpet and the fireplace and the lightning out here. So it kind of blends in a little bit. So it's kind of cool. So that's uh, one of the most important parts of maps is to make sure the scale is set right and that you understand uh, you know, what your needs are. Uh, that's important when you're, when you're using Fantasy Grounds, especially you know, when you need to uh, set up for the first time. Once you have that set, you don't really don't have to play around with it. So that's something that you might want to change um, as you go, depending on what, what's needed. So it just really depends on what, what your needs are and how things are for you. So it really just, you know, it just depends. All right. So the next thing is we're going to start putting the line of sight on, but I wanted you to know about the grid first, because that's actually important. So even though I already had the grid on there, I wanted to show you that so that you're not scratching your head going, what the heck was he talking about? So the grid is the most important part. And it's actually the most basic fundamental part. So if you have the grid set, you're pretty good to go. As far as targeting and using the map, you don't have to have line of sight and all that stuff. You can just get by with just the grid if you want. So the next thing is to start putting in the line of sight and some of the ambience. I'm going to actually um, make this kind of fancy because this is going to be for my 
horror one-shot game. So if you're interested in playing in that, it's going to be on the 30th, which is Saturday, Halloween weekend. Halloween's actually, I believe, on Sunday. And I'm going to run this Saturday afternoon, so hopefully it doesn't interfere with your trick-or-treaters. Uh, going to be horror-themed. I'm making pre-gens. going to be six players. Um, we're going to be um, exploring kind of a haunted theme. And I'm just going to share some of this work with you so you understand what goes into some of the prep. So that's what, what this is all about. So anyhow, the uh, the map here is just a first level floor of the of the, another map that I'm going to have to work on. So might as well do that while I'm doing a stream. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Getting some of this, like character creation and the map tools is probably your most time consuming aspects of any prep you want to do. If you own some modules already that are already prepped, you don't have to do a lot of this. This is for like homebrew. So I'm going to first name this map, comma, horror house 01. And S means small, so that that's, means that the scale on this is 50 by 50. And then the title over here, I'm going to hide this title here because I don't want this uh, to show. And I'm going to put level 1 here so I remember that this is the first floor. Or I can just put first floor, that makes sense. Bottom floor is, is probably what I want to call it. Okay, so there's the bottom floor. And then this is going to be um, a mansion or something like that. Like old mansion or wealthy mansion or something like that. Because this doesn't look like a poor person's place. I'll just say old mansion because it is old, but it's not necessarily decrepit yet. It's getting there, but it's got some nice qualities to it. So I'm just going to say Old Mansion. What happens there is when I share this map, which you do that by right-clicking on this little icon, or you can right-click inside the map, go to Sharing, and then Share Record. Once you do that, the players will see the map. But you don't want to do that until you have all your prep done. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to unlock it again. What I want to do is add the line of sight on the walls so that the players can't see through the walls and such. So when you have a map that's both indoor and outdoor, you have to mask off the interior from the ambient light from the outside. So if you don't, the ambient light is going to affect the entire map. So I'll show you how to do that. So when we're creating this, I'm going to set the, the outside ambient light to dark. And I'm going to do that with the map tools, but I don't have to do that right now, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Usually I do this at the end, but I want to get this set right now. So when you're doing the lighting for an indoor and outdoor map like this, you have to put some sort of, well, you don't have to, but it's wise to put some lighting in there in place um, so that it only affects the outdoors for the ambient lighting. And what I mean by that is this is going to be an outer courtyard and exposed to the outside. There's no cover or anything here. So this is going to be outdoors. And as you can see, there's some rain on here and such. So I'll match that later with some of the effects. I'll get I'll get some of that going. So what you want to do is go to the lighting tool. And you're going to pick which type of, of lighting that you're going to be affecting. In this case, it's going to be the ambient lighting, which is the outdoor lighting. We don't want the outdoor lighting to affect the interior. So we have to make sure that we, we set that. So in order to do so, we pick the type of preset. So we're going to say Moonlight, and that's going to affect the entire map at this point. And there's a mask now that's going to sit over the top of this. It's going to dim a lot of what, what we have out here. So in order to differentiate that, I'm going to have to mask off the house. So I'll show you that in a sec. So first, I'm going to pick the mask, which is going to cover the Moonlight for temporarily. So the reason why we can't see it right now is because I don't have the tools turned on in the in the uh, map tools. So if you want to start looking to see what this looks like, you turn on the lighting, which which shows you the the shadow that's coming from the uh, from the the shade basically that's coming from the night vision. And then if you have line of sight, you turn that on. And if you wanted a player view, that's what they're going to see at this point. But I don't want that on yet. I want to be able to see what's going on first. And I don't need the line of sight thing turned on just yet because I don't have it. So now I'm going to go back to the lighting tool and I'm going to go back to the ambient lighting and I'm going to mask the area outside or inside the building so that it doesn't get 
um, included in the ambient light. So I'm going to take this whole block here and quarantine that from the entire ambient light, even though it's a shadow or, or darkness. So to do that, I have put on the mask, and then I'm going to go to the selection tool, and I'm going to select this area all around the house here so that it is not going to be, uh, it's going to be basically hidden from the from the ambient layer. So if you come up here and you go to this this ambient lighting, you want to go to hide area and make sure you have you know everything selected and you're in the right area. And now I'm going to highlight the area that I do not want to be affected by the moonlight. And when you do that, it will basically hide this area from the outdoor lighting. And as you notice, I still have these two areas here. So I'm going to just take this and you don't have to do it all in one go. So I'm just going to take this and, and bring all this out to here so that I can start covering the area up. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and get some of these these areas that are not square. So you just do that by holding down the Alt key. And just you can drag this through like this. And you don't have, like I said, you don't have to do it all in one go. You can. So that's one area. Now I'm going to do the bottom half. What I did is I did most of it as a big rectangular block, but some of these angular things and such, you have to do these by hand. So now the area is, is masked off from the outside. So the outside will not affect the inside when it comes to the ambient lighting. And what I did is I hid this area from the mask itself. So there's a big mask over the whole map. That's basically the shadow from the darkness. But now that I have that uh, masked off, that's not going to impact it. So if I come over here to the um, to the actual play mode, and I turn on line of sight, and I turn on the, the map, now you can only see this outer courtyard. The players cannot see inside. And I can see a couple areas that I want to touch up. So that's why I'm checking that out. So if you look carefully, if I zoom in, you can see where I've, I didn't grab all this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little, just a little bit more. And I'm being meticulous and picky. It's probably not even necessary. So if you go over back to your map into the lighting area, and then I'm going to go to the ambient lighting. And temporarily, if you turn off the lighting, period, you're not going to see anything. So now I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And again, I'm going to hold the hide area. So I want that to be on. I'm going to hide some of these areas that I missed. So first of all, so just doing that helps. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. I'm drawing in this area here that wasn't wasn't captured the first time I did this, and I'm just gonna kind of come through here and. So that's basically all you're doing is you're just I gotta make sure I'm in the right tool also because I was I wasn't in the the correct tool. So if you come over to here and turn off line of sight and you disable this lighting, you won't be able to tell what you've done. But if I come back over to the lighting area and I go here, and I have a mask on right now, so if I come over here and I hold down the Alt key, I can draw in the area that I want. There we go. So draw in the area that you want to hide. So that just gives us more of a, a mask, but it's not as and you know as important as as getting at least to get the shadow out of the way. And you can see there's a little bit on the edge, no big deal. So that that takes care of the you know, the the outdoor and indoor thing. So now I'm going to go to the play mode again, and I want to turn off the player vision for now. And line of sight, I'm going to turn that off for right now because I want to actually get some of the walls in place and, and that sort of thing. So the data that I want to um, affect mostly is the outer walls and some of these inner walls. So what I'm going to do is grab and start putting the doors in. So the doors are one of the things that people struggle with when they first start this 
you bark on this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the line of sight tool. That's what I'm in right now. And then I'm going to click on the door tool. And then I want to click on the rectangle. And I'm going to turn these doors into rectangles. This is a double door, but I'm just going to make it one single door. And I'm just going to left click and drag and draw this rectangle outside here. So what that does is it allows for you to create a perfect rectangle or close to perfect. And you want to have it just a slightly bigger than the doorway because when you zoom out and you're playing, it's hard to, to click on these to in interact with them when you're trying to lock or open and close the door. So do yourself a favor and make those a little bit wider. Here's another door. So this is like the kitchen door. Goes from the kitchen to the dining area. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just drag around there. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to encompass most of that area. And then this is also a door. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And this is the, uh, goes underneath the staircase, just in case you're wondering. There's a staircase here. Um, and if you come through here, there's a pantry back here. It's underneath the stairs. So it's kind of like where you store your, your dry goods and stuff. So, so that's a storage area. But then on the outside here of the staircase, there's some bookshelves and looks like some barrels. And then there's some more bookshelves and supplies and such back here underneath the staircase. So the staircase goes up to the top. All right. So now there's like a, like an entertainment room where they have a desk and it looks like a gaming table. So if you're going to play cards or a roulette or something like that, there's a there's a table for that. So I want to go ahead and grab and make a door for this as well. So this is a nice double door that opens up into this study-like area. That's beautiful. And out here is an open, like kind of like in a living room, dining, or not dining, but like just like a relaxing area. There's like a... A bear uh, statue here. There's a chair. There's a big bearskin rug. Looks like there's some food out here on this table. There's a nice warm fireplace. And then if you notice, there's some exits here. So you are you can use these to create a larger space or you can quarantine. You know, you can basically make them closed if you want. These are options to connect these maps to other meanders. So if you have another map, you can technically grab the tile and, and connect it at these points. In this case, I'm just going to say this is one floor. It doesn't go anywhere else but upstairs. If you wanted a basement or something, you can add another room, and then it goes downstairs or something like that. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the line of sight. So those are the the actual areas where the doors are so if you wanted to you could also treat these as windows so that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to make these windows so i'm going to go ahead and change to the window mode and i'm going to do the same thing just draw in this area here so these might be big large bay windows or something like that so i'm going to go ahead and um, drag and and set this as a rectangle and it's it's going to be a window which means that light can come in but uh can't move through it. So there's one window. And that's what I'm going to use these areas for. Instead of doorways, I'm going to treat these as windows. I think that's that's a good use for them. Otherwise, you're going to have this big gaping hole and your players are going to wonder what's going on. I wonder, why why can't we go through there? So that's, uh, that's why I'm going to make them windows. So just for the sake of, of uh, peace of mind and also for for creating this. So these are going to be windows that go that lead outside basically. Okay. So those are your windows. And I got a couple more I think I gotta do. So there's one big one here in the dining area. Alright, so that's that's most of it. So we'll just say those are windows. Now there's probably other windows in these buildings, but as you can see this is as a bookshelf here. So there's no window there unless it's hidden behind the bookshelf. And then there's another bookshelf here. So I might put terrain on the bookshelves if they're tall enough. So what I'm going to do is switch to the terrain tool. And the reason I'm doing that is to give the players a chance to interact with the environment. So if they want to climb up the bookshelf and hide up there or something, they can. Like if you had a smaller NPC. So what I'm going to do is go to the line tool. 
in this case, and I'm going to line out this bookshelf here as terrain. And all that does is it makes it so you can't see on top of it. And if your GM wants to, they can reveal that area if you climb up there. So your eyes or whatever your normally your height for most players, you can't see up on top of those shelves. So that's why I'm putting that in there. And same with these this staircase. The only way you can really see on top of these is if you go up the stairs. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the rectangle tool on these. And I'm only going to grab the top area. I'm not going to grab the entire bookshelf. And that's going to just basically make it to where if you climb up here, you can see what's up there. And normally it's just nothing. It's just a just a, a space, basically. And same with this. I'm going to grab and drag this over. This is going to be a bookshelf. And then here are some bookshelves here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Grab this. There's a ladder right here. So if someone climbs up there, they'll be able to see up there. Now I kind of ran out of room, so that's something you got to be careful with. So I'm going to hit Control-Z which gets me out of that last thing I did. If you hit control Y, you can redo it. Or I could have just edited the thing and just dragged the, the points down further, but I, I wanted to redraw it. This is a wall down here, so we'll leave that. So those are bookshelves, uh, the green. And then I'm gonna do the same in here with this, this room here. So I'm gonna go to the line tool because it's not a perfect square. So just kind of go like this. and Just kind of make the uh, bookshelf Kind of stand out on its own. Okay, so that this is kind of the the things you're going to be going through when you create create a map. So that's what I've done is I've created all of these different things, to, uh, you know, in in sections or groups. I want to create a terrain on the very top stair, couple top stairs here, because what's happening is you can't really see on top of those stairs. So I'm going to make this zone right here um, harder to see when you're looking up the staircase. And you get up to the landing, you're not going to be able to see the landing. So I'm going to go ahead and add another rectangle. And this is going to be for the for the staircase itself. And that's only the very top stairs. I'm not going to do it for the entire staircase. So when you're standing here at the bottom, you're not going to see the very top. So that's why I'm going to put this on here. So I'm going to go back to the landscape tool. I'm just going to trace around this top stair. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's basically where the where the staircase ends. So that's pretty much it. That's that's what we're going to have for the interior stuff for like the decorations. I might do something with the fireplace. So this is actually a chimney, but if you wanted to climb up here for some reason, you could actually do that. So I could put uh, an area here that's basically what someone could climb on top of and an area here. And then I'm going to um, also do the bear head because it's pretty tall. So I'm just going to basically do a, a basic trace on the top of his on the top of his head there. I mean, I want to change that. So I only want the top of his head, not his face. So technically, that's all this is. So if you have a little gnome character or a halfling, and they want to climb up on top of the bear's head. There you go. <laughs> and uh, this is very nitpicky, so I doubt that's going to happen in your game, but you never know. So I just wanted to show you that you can do this something like this to help illustrate what's going on with your map. And the reason it looks funky like this because the bear has these ears. So I don't think I need that. But anyways, that's that's the top of the bear's head, we'll say. So once you start turning on your line of sight, you'll you'll start getting an idea of what, what's what and what's going on out here. So that's what it looks like for players at the moment. And then once you take that off, then you're, you'll start seeing that more of the how the tool is working. All right, I'm going to turn that off tempor temporarily and continue with the wall. So the walls are something that you're going to have to kind of get used to, get be careful with. Um, that's usually where people struggle the most. So... The walls are going to cut through the, the doorways and the windows, and then I'll go back and remove that after the fact. So if you come to uh, the wall tool for line of sight, and then you go to the actual wall, and you can do a square, like one big square, but it's better, I think, if you use the line tool. 
and you just pick a, a point that you want to start from. So I'm going to start in this bottom corner. I'm going to cut through about the halfway point here. You don't want to be right at the edge, but I definitely want to be in a little so you can see the artwork. So I want to grab and kind of start in the center, and I'm just going to cut through this uh, the windows and the doors. And I'm just going to cut through here. I don't really necessarily have to be perfect. But you want to leave a little bit of the door uh, frame and, and that sort of thing. So when your characters or your players are looking through here, they can see the detail that the artist has put into this. So the other thing is you want less points. So previously, a lot of us went nuts over how many points of uh of, of that you wanted along your walls. The preferred method now is not to have so many points because of performance issues. So when Fantasy Grounds has to recalculate every one of these points, that's what slows down the, your, your system. So you want to have the least amount of points as possible. So like this over here is a little bit of overkill. You can probably get rid of a couple of those, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's not like there's a million of them. Now that you have the outer wall done, now I'm going to start doing the inner walls. So the inner walls basically intersect sect here, so if you want to, you can just take and, and draw a line from, from basically roughly the center, and you just come down and you can overlap the existing line and double click, and later on you can come back and clean those up. So you don't even have to worry about it, just make sure the walls are in, and then you double click to release so that when you're done drawing the line, it doesn't try to pick up again. And in this case, I'm going to pick up on this point because it's already here. I clicked on that point, and I'm just going to use the arrow key to navigate me. And I'm just going to go just past this line here. And the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that this intersection is, is created. Because sometimes if you click right before it, that's not going to connect. And then it's hard to tell when you're zoomed way out. So it's better just to overlap the line. I learned that the hard way. I was told to do that. I you know I tried to get around it, but it just didn't didn't help so anyhow so i'm going to click on the i'm going to click just beyond the line here if i wanted to start a line and then i'm just going to cut through and come all the way to this corner and then i'm going to go to the left and i'm going to connect with this vertice here so this is basically you know just a real rough thing and you can see it's not perfect i mean who cares right i mean it's not like i'm releasing this commercially and if you really want to you can come back later and adjust those so I'll, I'll do that when i get all the walls in so it looks like i have a majority of them let's see do i have any more out here i want to put a partial wall around this area here because of the location maybe i don't know i think we're okay because we have terrain here you could put a terrain line up here but i, I don't think it's going to be necessary i can put one line in here as we get up so if you come up to about where the bookshelf starts and then you just come up and draw in maybe up to this point and you could turn off this snap to grid so that you're not locked into anything and i'm just going to double click right there so that would be just a partial line to block some of the line of sight. But you, that's kind of a judgment thing. Like, you don't have to do that. So, And then I have the line of sight tool off on purpose so that if I need to make adjustments, I or I have the uh, snap to grid off on purpose. So if I need to make adjustments, you can. So if you go to the selection tool, you can move your points, provided it's not a vertice. So in this case, I want to... I want to pick this point and I'm just going to hit delete. And that gets rid of that little excess tab that I was telling you about earlier. So if you want to clean up your map and you don't want all these extra little overhangs, you can just go back with the selection tool, which is important to know that, not the drawing tool, but the selection tool. And you just come through here and you go any anywhere you overlapped, you can take a look at it and see see what's going on, make sure it's right. So when you zoom in, that's what you want to see. You want to see the corners connecting. And any time you overdraw or like go beyond the point, it's going to make that little tag or that little tail. That's fine. It just single click on it, hit the delete key. It's not a big deal. That's just to help clean up the, the area that you created. 
And that also ensures that the lines are connected. So here's another one. So I'm just going to come back. And yeah, it's a little extra work after the fact, but it's easier to do that than fighting with the tool and trying to get everything perfect. Now, it's also saying that you can adjust lines. So if you wanted to, I can take this line and stretch it a little bit more and kind of straighten it out a little. So if you really have to, there's a there you can do it. So no, I don't I don't want this to be snap to grid and I want to make sure that they're connected. So yep. Go. So you got to turn off the snap to grid occasionally when you're trying to get things to line up. Normally you don't have to mess with it. That's only if you're getting annoyed and you and you need it to quit moving on you and trying to trying to uh, snap to everything when you're really trying to get that precision. But normally you don't need that much precision. Okay, so the next thing is to create a, a way to just get rid of the line in the center. So I'm going to do is go to the line tool and I'm just going to draw a small point in here. I want to see if this, because before it was deleting the whole line. I'm not sure why it was doing that. I think it's because I didn't have the the doorway encapsulated with any points. So I'll see if it still does that. But they changed the way the behavior is on this. So I'll have, I'll have to check it out. So I'm going to go to the selection tool and I'm going to highlight these three points and hit delete. Yeah, it deleted this little line right here, which isn't a big deal. I can redraw that. But that's a lot better than it was the other day. It was deleting the entire line. So, so I'm going to go ahead and drag this over, go over to the line tool. And drag this through. And then I'm just going to select this point with the selection tool. And then hit delete. And that gets rid of the, the, the excess line. So I might have to play around with these a little bit to get used to the tool again. Because it's changed a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, just kind of go to the line tool. I'm drawing a little partial wall here, and let's see if it deletes this line or this one. We'll find out. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the select tool, and select that, and highlight by left-clicking these three and clicking delete. Yeah, see, it deleted that line. It wasn't doing that before. I'm not sure why it's doing it now, but if you have to, you can go back in and draw this line. So if I go to the line tool... I'm just going to click on this point and go back to this point. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but uh, they changed the way it operates. So you used to just be able to come through and quickly move those, those points out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if it's going to work this way. So I'm going to come off that point there and highlight these and see if that works. So if I'm going to go to highlight, oops. Got to go back to the uh, wall tool. Okay, so I'm on the selection tool. So I'm just going to see what that helps. Yeah, so I was able to do it like that without without any problems. So that's that's good. So that's what I need to do is start coming off the edge instead of just deleting the line. So if I go to the line tool, I'm going to start from this vertice here and just make some points. And then I'm just going to go to the selection tool and highlight that and oh no it did do it i don't know why it's doing that but that is something that's changed so go back to the line tool and here and go back to this vertice so that's that yep it's connected it looks right so that's some of the things that you're going to be fighting with when you're when you go through here is you know, how do you make your doors and windows and such might be a little bit different than it was before. They've changed the tool so much that every time I touch it or something different. So just keep that in mind. So that's that. Let me see what happens when I do that. So I made two separate lines this time. Now I'm going to just go to the selection tool and I'm going to select these. Yeah, it's still doing that. I don't know why, but. Anyhow, that is something that I need to retrain myself to do because I've, I've been fighting with that for a couple weeks now. I'm not sure exactly how they what, what happened, but you used to be able to draw this line in here. 
and then select it and delete the delete the line inside here without without deleting the entire line. Not sure what's going on with that, but I'll go ahead and just redraw these in. No big deal. Not gonna be maybe a big baby and cry about it. Let's do it. And then once I have that, now I'm gonna take that and select this little nub here and get rid of that. So I guess it's just a matter of getting used to the changes of the tool. That's all it is. I come here and try something else. So let's see what happens. Let's see if I can create something that'll work for me. So I want to make sure I'm just highlighting these three dots. Yeah, that worked pretty good, but still it deleted the, the line that you don't want deleted. So I'm not sure why, but the, the way the nodes are working out, it's a little different. So that's not a big deal. All right, so that's basically what I'm going to do is go through and, and delete the things that are connected in here. So... I would like if someone's on right now to educate me what I'm doing wrong because you used to be able to do this. There's no no reason why they had to change. I don't know why, but yeah, see, there's the line here. It, it deleted that, so I'm not sure why it's doing that. But I thought once you had a point in there, it would keep it there. You don't have to deal with that. But it's not change something. But if you want to move, like I said, if you want to move any lines, like right now, I might move that one a little bit it's a little bit too far to the other way and then this is another window so I'll go back to the line tool I'm in the wall tool by the way and I've already tried to use like the window tool and doing that and it didn't make any difference so let's see if I can see if I can trick it or something <laughs> trick myself so I'm gonna go to the highlight tool and that hit this See, that seemed to work. I don't. I don't understand what my the problem was, but see that worked. I don't know. I don't. I don't get the how it works anymore with that. But what I did is I came off of this vertice here. So I went to the line tool, made a line here, and then made another separate line from here to here, and that created these points, which also includes this line here in the center. So let me highlight that and see what happens. So if I go and highlight these three points and hit delete, yeah, that oh no, it it, it deleted this line. So I don't I don't know what's going on. Kind of strange, but anyhow, that is basically the doors are are dealt with. This door here actually doesn't go anywhere in particular, but it should go underneath the stairs. So I would just probably leave this door locked. But if somebody wants to go in there. They can probably go underneath the staircase, so you could potentially draw something in there, but I think I'm going to uh, leave that one. Maybe it's a false door or something, but I would keep it locked, and if someone wants to look in there, just say they look in there without opening the door. So that's that. Let me, uh, I got one, one or two more doorways to deal with, so try this again. So I have this line tool. Coming off this vertice, I'm going to go this, and let me go down to the next point, which is from here to, let's go to here. Now I'm going to delete those points up in here. So I'm going to go to the highlight tool, let's delete those red points there, hit delete. Yeah, it kind of worked. I mean, huh. I guess it's best just to draw a little a little leader through here instead of all the way across. That might be the ticket. And then this, if you want to adjust this a little bit, can slightly move that over. This is a little close here, so if you want to move that, you're going to have to turn off the magnetic slap, the snap, and move that up. Move this up and move this up. And what you'll see is it'll just keep drawing that in. So you want to move this away. Let me draw. Let me delete this because it's a mess now. Okay. So here's the point 
I want that to be like more like here. And I go back to the line tool. And this is see, this is when you start getting to be too too perfect, and that's when you start having problems. So if I come up here and I move this back, and I go to the line tool, and I'm going to click, I'm going to go back to the magnetic snap because I want it to snap now. And I'm going to draw this over to here, double click. That ends that line, and I'm going to draw a new line through the vertices that were there before and connect them. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Do that again. So I just want to draw to this point. I don't need to draw all the way through. Those points are established already. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and click that and just delete that little leader there. So that's just kind of like some of the little struggles you go through, and that's realistic. I mean, you're going to fight with the tool a little bit to um, get used to it. A lot of people are frustrated because they don't quite understand how the tool works, and, and I'm kind of amongst that that group. I, I'm still kind of getting my bearings, and even though I've been using it for months, I'm still finding out things, better ways to do things. So that is basically the the interior and then when we turn on line of sight, let's see what that looks like. So now that we have the windows in and the shelving and staircase and all that good stuff, looks like I have removed all the, the line of sight from the doors. Let's see what we get. So if I go to the play area, this is where a lot of the DMs and people that use the map tool get a little bit confused. So if I turn on the lighting or that turns on any ambient lighting or any of the occluders that you have. And same with line of sight tool. And that's what it's going to look like for players. So there's nothing yet that's going to light up the map. So I'm going to add a fire pit or a glow here from the fire. So I want to go to the lighting tool. And the type of lighting is going to be, I'm going to actually make it a separate layer. So to make a separate layer in Fantasy Grounds, you can add a painting layer, you can add a wall layer, you can add an effects layer, and a folder. So what I'm going to do is add a separate layer without selecting any of these on the bottom. And just that, just click away. So in other words, don't click on the Horror House uh, tile, which is this whole floor. I'm just going to click somewhere in here where it's blank, where there's nothing. And that deselects anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the add light, which is going to be like your ambient light. And I'm going to click in this fireplace area. And then you want to pick the type before you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click torch, because that's about the closest you're going to get to a fire pit. And then I will place it. So right now it's this yellowish color, but if you wanted to match it to the yellow of the fire... You can pick the light color, go to the eyedropper tool, and run your your mouse to the brightest brightest area, and that will be your new lighting color. But I think that's a little bit too too dark, to be honest. I think I want it a little bit brighter. So go ahead and do something like that. Hit OK, and then you will click on the lighting area. And as you can see, it made a new light here. So I'm just going to rename this as, instead of lights, it's going to be the fireplace. So that way I know what it is. And that that's basically what I'm trying to do. And then when you come back here and you um, go back to your play mode, and you turn these on, this is what, this is what that, that lighting is going to look like. So when they come into this room, they'll be able to see the fire... They'll see this, and they'll see the bookshelves. It'll be pretty dim, so this will be really nice ambience, uh, ambiance actually, when they come into the, the house. So that's pretty cool. So I like that. That's uh, And then here's the doorway and the hall. So when you open that up, it's going to let in a little bit of that ambient light, which is really cool. So I might leave that door open. So that's another good point is usually when you create this uh, and you export it, all the doors will be locked by default. I'm going to leave that door open and unlock so it's like it's a jar. And I'm going to turn off the player lighting for right now. And I'm going to come through the doors and lock the one. So you hold down the shift key and then you click on the door. And what it does. Oops. see 
Shift and click usually locks the door. So maybe I'm not in the right mode here. I'm, I'm in the play mode, so here's the open area. So I don't need to lock that. Um, the windows, I don't need to lock. Maybe I'm going to lock the door between the the dining room. Well, actually, I'm going to lock the kitchen door. There we go. So you see the little lock symbol. So when they come in, that door is going to be locked. So they'll have to find a way into the door, into that doorway. And then for this one here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So that's also locked. So they can't just come right in. So this door is going to be locked. So they're going to have to unlock it or they're going to have to find a key. This door over here is not locked. So they'll be able to go into this little parlor here. Or this is like the parlor, I guess. And then up when they go up the stairs, they will be able to see part of this this uh, staircase, but not the very top. So that's that's basically what you want for this house. Um, I don't know if there's any other areas in here. I might put a candle in the uh, game room. So if you wanted to add an asset that's not already there, you can. So here's a suit of armor. Here's a little table. Maybe I'll put a candle in the doorway as they come in. That might be handy. So if you don't have a candle or if it doesn't look correct, you can add a candle if you need to. So that's important that if you have the opportunity, you can add your own candle. So I'm going to go to the assets area, which is where all of your artwork and stuff. And make sure you're in the images area because that's where you want to select your, your assets. Then I'm going to search for candle. It's going to take a second or two if you have a lot of data. So just be careful with that. So if you're doing a, a game like this and you have a lot of assets, you want to try to do this before the game. So here are some candles. There's one with a little bit of, uh, looks like a little bit of smoke or something coming off of it. So I like that. So I want to go to the layers tool and I'm going to drag that candle into the tile area because I want to plop it down like a tile. The reason I'm doing this and not dragging it straight to the map because you can control the scale and which way it's going. So the smoke is going to the to the northeast or northwest or northeast. So when they open the door, it's going to look like the smoke or whatever is being kind of pushed away from the breeze from the outside. So I want to go ahead and put the candle here. That's half of a square basically. So I'm going to scale this down to 0 0.3, and it will when I place it on here, it'll it'll snap to the grid, and I'll turn that snap to grid off so I can adjust where exactly on this desk I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in the tile mode. So it's click, and there's the candle itself. See, it's in the middle here. I don't want it like that. So I'm going to take that off, the, gra the snap to grid, and I want to make sure I have this highlighted. I'm going to go to the layer selection tool because I want to select this layer, and I want to move this over to the table. So I'm just going to grab this stuff here on the outside. So I I'm in the selection tool. And I'm just going to move this over. And I want the snap to grid off because it's going to try to move to where you want it, where it wants to go. And I want it to go where I want it to go. And it looks a little bit small, not much. So I'm just going to lightly drag it. So you hold down the shift key to, to do it in scale so you don't make it too uh, distorted. All right, it's a pretty good sized candle. So that's kind of what I've done with that. So there's the candle. So I'm just going to rename it. So candle. I put handle. It's the candle. Okay, so that's the candle. And I'm going to assign a light to it because I want to put a candle light on there. So this is the fireplace. But I'm going to select the candle because I want the actual candle to have the lighting on it. I'm going to make a folder. And I'm going to call this uh, candle lighting is what I'm going to do is put the candle lighting in there as well. So once I have it, it'll be in a, in a group. So when I move it, it moves the lighting also. So I'm going to go to the lighting tool and I'm going to put the lighting, actually attach it to the candle itself. So I want to select the candle because I want it on the candle itself. 
And then I'm going to select the preset. So we're going to click candle. I want to make sure that I'm still on the candle uh, icon or token. And then I'm going to leave this preset the way it is. I want to make sure it's on the add light because that's where you're actually going to add it. So candle, it's in the add light area. And now all I got to do is click on the candle itself. It should go on there. So yeah, so the lighting went on the candle. Once it's on there, I'm going to lock this. And you can lock any layers you want so they don't move. Now, if you want to move the candle and the lighting with it, you're going to have to unlock it. And then you have this folder now. So you can drag this wherever you want as long as it's unlocked. So if I want to drag this somewhere, I can. So right now, I, I accidentally added another layer, which is wrong. I want to go to the selection tool first. Now I can move this around if I have to. This is just the lighting layer. So anyways, you can move things as a group if you need to. So I'm going to lock it for now. I want it to stay like that. And to test this out, I'm going to go to play mode and turn on the player view. So there's the candle light coming in the doorway. And then, of course, you're getting the ambient light also from the fire pit. So that's that. So that's uh, interesting. Now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of distortion to the fire, and I'm going to add some ambient effects outside. And this would be really cool with some music and some like ambient noise. I'm not going to put on the music because, one, it's distracting. The other is also because it's, it's hard on the computer. Sometimes my computer will freeze up because it's a little bit older. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to this area. I'm going to make a new effects layer. And I'm thinking I'm going to make a, a place for the fireplace. So I'm going to make a folder. So I'm going to call this uh, um, fireplace because it's all going to be in one area and I want to organize it. So call this fireplace. And we're going to stick the fireplace in the fireplace folder. And then I'm going to add an effects layer in here. So down below, add an effects layer. And I'm going to drag it into the fireplace area. And I'm going to call this, um, I'll call it flame flicker or something like that so I know what the heck it is. And then I'm going to assign it an effect. So in this case, this is going to be the water effect. And that just kind of gives that rippling effect. You see it affects the whole map, and that's not what you want. So I'm going to add a mask layer. And all I'm going to do is just make this little area right here a little bit wavy. So that when I have this, when I have this uh, fire going, it looks kind of comes to life a little bit more. There's a little bit more uh, movement on it because right now it has a really fast flicker rate, so it's kind of hard to see the torch flicker. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hold down the Alt key and kind of just trace an area around the front of the fire, and then come along this line here. Doesn't that be perfect? And that kind of gives the illusion of heat coming out of the fire pit. Um, I want to hide this area along the edge because I don't want it to grab the very edge because then it looks like it's moving the, the fireplace. I don't want that. So I want to make sure that this area here is hidden from that. I don't mind if it's down here, but if it comes into the actual edge here, it looks like the the actual, there we go. And that's just to kind of give that illusion. And then to fix this up a little, I'm going to turn the speed down just a hair and the droplet size just a hair. Uh, the horizontal kind of goes left to right. I'll just kind of turn that down just a touch. And then the blurring tool is important because it, it gets rid of that line. So right now, without the blurring tool, you can really see that contour, the contrast of where the effect is. But if you put the blur on there, it's going to um, kind of mitigate some of that. So it's you want a little bit of it because then it will totally blur it out. But you, you want to get rid of those hard edges. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And then I want to go back to the, what, what tool is that? So here's the effect itself. And this is going to be called, instead of water, we're going to call it um, heat ripple or something like that. So we know what it is. And it's sitting on top of the fire pit, which is the fireplace light, which is kind of what we want to make that distortion. And then I want to go back over this and, and make sure that I have this 
this hidden. So I want to go to uh, the hide area, and I'm going to hide this area again to make sure that it's not. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's okay to have a little bit, but don't want it to make it look like it's it's moving the mantle or the top of the fire. So that's uh, how you blur that so it's not as strong in that area. You don't want it to come down like that. There we go. So I'm just kind of experimenting right now with how far out that should go. Okay, so that's hiding it from the from the blurring tool. So that kind of gives it that illusion of heat. And that's kind of what you want for, for fires, you know, that kind of that rippling effect. And it kind of distorts the light. So when you're coming out here from a distance, you can see the little bit of that flame uh, moving through. And you could do that also with the candle if you wanted to. You can have that, that same effect. So if I wanted to add another effect like that, I could. But I think that might be a little too much for a small candle like that. Because you got to remember, you're adding an entire mask over the top of the just to get this little area. So it may not be conducive to what you're doing. So just depends. So that's how you add assets and some personal lighting. So this is pretty much all the lighting that's going to be inside. We have this candle. You can see the flicker here. And then we have this warm campfire light. And I said I was going to put something in the, in the gaming room. But I think I want to leave it that way because it looks cool like that. And this door is open, but if I close the door, it's going to be pitch dark. So I'll keep it closed until the adventurers come in, and then when they open the door, some of the light will spill in. And they will have their own light, so that's something that, that you got to remember, too. Now, outdoors, I'm going to temporarily turn off the line of sight tool. So I'm going to disable the, the lighting for right now. And I'm going to come in here and create another effect. So this is going to be the ambient lighting outside. So I'm just going to make a whole new layer. I'm going to call it an effect. And I'm just going to call it weather. Just so I know what it is. And this one is going to be rain. So I'm going to do the rain effect. Weather, rain. And then change the effect layer, the bottom. And then add it. I already, already added the effect layer. Now I'm going to change this to rain. So that's like that. And what you'll notice is the rain is on the inside and the outside. So what you have to do is mask it off again. So I'm going to add the mask. And the only part that's going to get rain is the outside. So I want to reveal. So I'm on the reveal tool. I'm going to reveal this area as much as I can out here. And then I'm going to come in here with, with the another rectangle and kind of come into this area. That way the rain comes in the, there. And then I'm going to use the Alt key and trace around these kind of these little areas that I wasn't able to, able to grab. And I'm going to do the same down here. So just kind of come through, grab this area. And that allows for the mask to peek through the, the covering layer. So that's the rain. And now you can adjust the amount of rain. So I might turn the rain down just a little bit so it's not quite as heavy. You can turn up the intensity, which will show the rain a little bit better. I think that's a good idea because I like the, the pitter-patter of the rain. And then the speed, you can change the direction of the, how the rain's falling and how heavy it is. So I kind of like that that heavier so you can freeze it almost too i like the heavier heavier downpour and this map kind of shows the puddles like that so I, I like that so there's the pouring down rain and then you could change the direction so i'm going to have the direction of the rain kind of follow the the artwork if we can and that's basically the the gist of that and the lighting if, if any, from the outside, the moonlight is going to be over the top of the house. So I'll change that in a minute. But there is the, the rain. It's just outside here. And I need to add a little bit more in this corner. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and trace around just to get that little bit of area down here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I, I want to have it to look kind of realistic. And then I'm going to grab this little area here too. 
So this is just the preliminary rain filter here. So there we go. So there's your rain that's outside. I like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of mist. Might be overkill, but I want that little illusion of mist out here or some kind of clouds or something. So again, I'm going to leave the rain layer on the top layer here, but on top of that is going to be the, the clouds or something. So I'm going to go ahead and click another layer. And I think... Um, if I do the mist, it's going to be underneath the rain, so I might do it that way because that way it's real subtle and not a bunch of clouds. So we're going to go ahead and um, click the the type here, and this is going to be mist. So you can see the mist is going the wrong direction pretty much, and it's kind of too much. So first of all, for the speed, if you put it in the center, that's going to make it neutral, and it's going the right way right now. So I want to change it to the more of a neutral that's 51 so I go to 52 I think so 52 51 and then if I have it to that area or to that position it's going to go ahead and it's going to kind of follow this direction in the direction the rain's coming so it's coming off the building and then I want to mask the entire area because I don't want all this outside here so I'm going to go ahead and hit mask and then I'm just going to reveal the areas where this is going to appear. So I'm going to draw that area here, get as much of this as I can, which is like that. And then I'm going to grab these little oblong areas. So I'm going to come in here and grab here and just kind of come up to the doorway like that. doesn't have to be perfect, but... That's basically where the mist is going to be. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just grab this area here. That's hard to get with the square. And then this here. And you can blend that in so later on it won't be as dramatic. But I'm just going to grab these areas in here. And you can see you don't have to do this all in one shot. You can do this in patches. That way you're not straining your wrist or you know, trying to figure out how you're going to do it in one swallow. So that it, it's nice to be able to do that, but it's not necessary. You really can't in some cases, especially when you have these odd shapes. So these are just little things you can do to... And I'm going to come down here at the bottom here and grab grab this area so I want to hold down the control key so you can get most of it but I'm going to go grab the alt key and grab the rest of this that's just a, a method that get most of it with the square and then when you have to get all these little details you use the alt key and just hand draw it in so that way Kind of speeds things up a little bit, but then it also gives you practice with using that tool. You see it's not perfect, so if you've messed it up, you can always come back and hold down the Alt key, and you can recover it back up in case you go too far. So that's just a, a way you can do this. And then go back to the Reveal area, and you can reveal this little area in here. I got one more spot. That I'm going to do. So, Alt key, grab this, come down here, come through here, and connect it. And you can see I kind of missed this area up here. So, and that has to do with, you know, how you're zoomed in. So, if you want to, you can kind of clean that up. That. So, it's not, not a perfect science, but you can get close. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean this up too. There you go. So that's basically how you how you can kind of clean that up with the, the tool. All right. So once you have that in place, go ahead and hit the blur. And that will get rid of the, the contrast of, of the edges. So you won't have that. It'll be more blurred in. It won't be so dramatic. So if you turn off the... You leave it like that, you can see the lines, but if you actually blend it a little, 
it looks really good. Like it, it kind of buffers it in. So it's not, it feathers it in is what it does. And it kind of pixelates it out so it's not, not so dramatic. So that's the mist. And now I want to turn down the amount of mist because I don't want it totally obscuring the map. And the speed is fine. So that's basically a real subtle effect. I mean, I got to turn it up a little bit. It's got to show something. But definitely maybe like around 60. So there's the mist that's coming off the building. Um, and it's under the rain, I think. No, it's going to be now. There we go. So it's below the rain so that we can see the rain. And the rain kind of distorts the mist too. So what I want to do to the rain is kind of turn that down a little bit because it's a little much. There we go. So that, that looks pretty good. I, I like the way it turned out. And both of these are are affecting the weather. So I'm going to make a folder. I'm going to call this weather. And that will basically be where I stick those effects. And I want the mist under the rain or maybe over still. Kind of liked it over, but let me look at it under again. Yeah, it's it's the rain shows a little bit more. And then you can kind of looks more like clouds if you put it above. So that's why I have it below. And then when you're done, you lock the layers so in case you don't want to move them on accident. So there we go. So there's the outdoor ambiance. And you got the indoor stuff. So when you're done with the map or you're happy with it, um, what we're going to do is move the map. So let me uh, let me do that. So moving the map like so. Now the, the key is to, tr to center the map. So I'm going to go back to play mode. And I want to move the map to a, a good location for me. So this is where I'm going to have the map. I'm not going to be quite that big. This is important, by the way. If you're running a game, it's it's placement is everything. So, if well, at least it's something because it it's really going to annoy you if you don't have things placed in the right areas. So that is where the map's going to sit. When I'm done editing it and such, because now that I have line of sight and the um, changes in there, that's basically what I want to see. And that's what it's going to be like when the when the, once the players get on the map, there that's basically what it's going to look like, which is really cool. But let me um, uh, turn off player vision for the moment. And I'm going to use the down arrow to toggle the toolbar. And I'm going to use zoom to fit to kind of get this map centered where I want it. That's about where it's going to be. And when I turn off, when I lock this, that's that's a really nice, really nice, uh, nice map. And it looks like I want it to be a little bit wider, not much. A little bit wider and a little bit, or I should say a little bit taller. And there's the width. So I just kind of adjust it to accommodate the, the dimensions of the map. And then let's go like that. Yeah, that looks good. So that's pretty good right there. That's the uh, ambiance. So let's take a look at the characters on the sheet. So I want to go to the party sheet or the uh, combat tracker. I have two characters on here, so let's see what let's test this out. See what they so they're going to start outside. So I'm going to drag this little friendly icon down here. It could be it's this green one, which is all your allies. So I'm going to drag and drop them onto the map. That's the first thing you do once the map's done. And then I want to um, take possession. So first, I'm going to select Ilaria. So that's what I mean by select. And as you see, the map kind of jumped over to select her, her token. If you don't want that, if you want your map to stay centered, you go to the options. And this is for each player in each DM. And you turn off the auto center map. So you turn that off and it won't jump like that anymore. So that's something that might annoy you when you're running the game. So turn that off if you don't want your map to, to become unfocused and uncentered on your on your main part of the map. Especially as a game master, that can be really annoying. As a player, probably not so much, but as a game master, yes. So that's uh, so. Ilaria is a celestial. So when she has her dark vision on, it, that's what she sees basically. So when I have possession of the token, that's what she sees out here. She doesn't see inside here. And matter of fact, if I hit Control P, that is her actual vision. So as the game master, I can see inside, but as the player, that's what she's going to see. So I'm using Control-P 
to toggle the player vision, and then this is the GM overview. So that's basically it. And then when you go to the next person or next actor, I take possession of Braylon. I think he has the same thing. Let me check his character sheet. Yeah, he also has dark vision. So that doesn't uh, that doesn't help like for for knowing what what a human looks like. So I'm going to grab an NPC, and I will grab just a an acolyte or something, maybe a priest. And the acolyte doesn't have dark vision, so I'll put him on the on the combat tracker first. I'm going to make him visible so we can see his token. And then I'm going to grab and drag him onto the map. And then this is what we'll see. And now that I have him, I'm going to select him in the combat tracker, and I'm going to select the token. And that's basically what he sees. He's, you know, he sees us outside. I don't think he has dark vision. I'm not sure why. I might have party vision on, so that's... Because, see, these two have dark vision, but this NPC does not. I'm not sure why he's getting to see the things the same way. Maybe it's just the way the, the artwork is. So when he comes up to the door, I'm going to go ahead and unlock it and drag him through. And I'm going to close the door behind him so it's not affected by the outdoor light. So that's basically what he's seeing inside. So he sees the... When you have it like that, when you're not selecting it, that's deselecting, you're going to see everything as the Game Master. But if you have it selected, now you're seeing it as he would. So he doesn't see through the the stairwell here, and he's kind of uh, in the staircase now. That's why I put the wall there, so that you won't necessarily be able to see over the rail. So it's more like a, a stairwell. When you come down here, this is the actual railing, but then it turns into a wall as it goes up so and then there's some bookshelves along the wall so that's basically uh what you'll see now if you have them in a dark area like this let's say you want to move them to the kitchen so the door is locked your characters can't move through there but as the game master if you hit shift you can move anything wherever you want so i'm going to move them into the dark kitchen so that's what he sees nothing really in the dark kitchen so I think that's a, a crazy thing. So if you hit Control P, that's that's what he really sees. So there's no lighting. He has got a little bit of memory up on the top because he was up there. You can kind of just barely see anything up there. But as the game master, this is what what I see, so I can tell when I want to know what he's looking at. I'll just hit Control P. Right now he's looking at nothing. So if you want to um, give him a candle, let's say he says, oh, I can't see a damn thing. He's going to light a candle. So you come up to the effects area, and you'll notice that there's a list of, of lighting presets. So you can drag this candle, or maybe he has a lamp or a lantern. Let's say he has a lantern. Candle's better because it doesn't give off quite as much light. It gives a better illustration of what, what he's actually going to look at. But you can use any of these if, if it's applicable. But I'm going to go ahead and grab... And just drag and drop the candle, and it adds the effect to his his uh, combat tracker. Now, when you look at his token, when you have possession of it, that's what he's going to see. So when he moves around, and I'm going to hit Control P, that's what he's looking at as a player. As the GM, I can kind of see a hybrid of both. So if he comes up to this cupboard, it's basically locked. He can't unlock it. If he comes up to this door, though, he can unlock that and open it if he wants, and that allows him to pass through. If the door is closed or locked, he can't pass through it. So that's basically how this how this uh, plays out. So if you're going to use Fantasy Grounds and, and get used to how this works. So taking possession of a token is probably the confusing part. So if you click on it once... Um, You'll have this possession of him. You'll understand what it looks like. And let me turn on the play review for the whole time. Because this right now, this is the GM mode. So if I unlock this and I go to the player vision, that's basically what the players are going to see. Now when I move this around, you'll be able to see what's going on. And there's a table in here, so he kind of has to move around the table. But that's, that's how that looks for him. And then when he comes through the doorway again, now if you close the door... 
and he comes up to this. The, the lighting from the candle doesn't go in there, so that's kind of cool. So he's in the kitchen right now where they prep all the food. So if I come over to one of the other characters and I open the door, that's what they're going to see when they come in. And that's Braylon. He has night vision or dark vision, so he can see through. He can see these darker areas, whereas this character cannot. So when you take possession of a token, that's that's the view that you want to look at. I think what happens is DMs will pick the token, and they have it deselected, and then when they're moving around, they don't realize that. So you want it selected before you move it and be, while you're trying to actually get an idea of what they're looking at. Um, so this is with the party vision or the the lighting on for, for player view. So if you don't want to run your game like that, you can turn that off. And when you get to a player, if they ask you any questions, you can hit control P and that gives you a, a vague idea of what they're seeing. So it depends on what the situation is. I think uh, for this game, I'm going to run it in player view so that I can get the immersion and I can describe things quicker. Uh, but if you're outside, like you're you know, outdoors, I think running it the other way is better, but it just depends. So that's basically how this line of sight is going to work. So we added line of sight. We added a couple assets. We added some occluders. We, we dealt with some doors and windows. And we're going to basically, um, we're going to call it a stream. I think that's enough to kind of get you started. Just remember that, you know, you don't have to be perfect. And a lot of the things you're going to come across, you know, you're going to learn how to get around it. You're going to work work through it to get some uh, skill, some practice. That's all you need, really. It's just a little patience and time. So I'm going to let it go now. I think I'm done showing this for right now. This is, again, like a horror theme type thing for Halloween. I'm also running this game um, on the 30th. So if the signups will be in the description below. So if you want to sign up for that. There's still a lot of openings. Last time I looked, I had five openings. I only have one player. So you got the rest of the month to sign up. There's going to be six players, pre-gens provided. These are a couple of them. Uh, this is also the first map that we're going to be using. So uh, hopefully you guys will join us and we'll have some fun. So I'll talk to you guys later. See you around the community. If you haven't joined Fantasy Grounds Academy, just take a search on Google. You'll find us. We are on all the social media platforms and we will also... Uh, be covering um, different topics on those channels. Today I picked maps. Yesterday it was characters. I'm probably going to go back to characters again. 